Hey friend, in this video, we are doing something a little bit different. I recently opened up for my patrons only on my Patreon channel to submit their artwork for me to critique. So we're gonna go through some art submissions. This is gonna be helpful for you to see my tips, what I would do differently. Um, a lot of things are gonna revolve around very, very small changes. So if you've been frustrated with certain things but you don't know what it is, this video might be really eye-opening for you. So if you're ready to see what comes out of these art submissions and art critiques, then let's dive in. All right, so the first submission is from Joanne R. She has been following this YouTube channel for about two months and would call herself a beginner level. She has all of the supplies that I've suggested here on this channel, except for paints. She has the Cotman version of the Windsor Newton paints instead of the professional level. Um, she is l still learning how to mix colors and seems like this is the main difficulty that Joanne has. And she says, I think I'm getting the hang of painting leaves, but need to work on the colors. Flowers were much harder for me. She submitted a photo of her floral wreath. I can tell right off the bat that one of the main things that would really up the level of this wreath is the pigments. So she mentioned that she's using Windsor Newton Cotton level paint. It also looks like the paper is different, but she said that she's using uh, the same paper that I use. It looks a little bit smoother to me, like Canson watercolor paper, um, because some of the bleeds are just more stagnant and stiff looking. Overall, I think this is, especially for a beginner level, a really, really good painting. I love it. The symmetry of the wreath is like on point. I would just loosen up a little bit if you don't want it to look so stiff and if you want it to look more flowy and organic, try to loosen up and get longer uh, C curves or secondary stems that go to your leaves instead of having all of the leaves hugging the main stem because it just feels a little bit tight. But overall, the minor things are the colors are just a little bit flat, probably because of the Cotman level thing. And then the entire wreath itself just feels a little bit too perfect, like shape wise. Um, so try and loosen up a little bit, extend your C curves for your secondary stems, like I said, and um, just kind of bounce around the wreath like you're kind of doing this dance with your flowers and with your leaves. So instead of just plugging them in at the same exact angle all the way up around the stem, try to make it more like a dance, be more going with the flow type of feeling, and that way you'll get a little bit more of that organic tossed look with it. But I think it's an amazing job. Great job, Joanne. All right, our next contestant uh, for this art critique is Priscilla B. So Priscilla has been painting for about seven months and she is using the same exact supplies that I have. So she's using the same supplies, has been painting for seven months. That's not very long. So let's take a look at what she submitted. And that is quite amazing for only painting for seven months. Actually, when we first saw this photo, John was like, wait a minute, is that yours? Um, but my main, so what I love about uh, this painting submission is the colors are on point. They're like exactly what I mixed up. All of these colors are very, are uh, mixed up colors from this tutorial on Patreon. And so you nailed it with the color mixing. Uh, composition, you also nailed. And it feels really loose, really, it, the shapes are on point for the flowers. Usually when um, when I've taught these workshops in person, uh, there's been a variety of levels of people attending these workshops and anywhere from multiple years, painting multiple years to this is my first day painting and people who have even painted for multiple years, their flower shapes are still even not on point. So really great job with your flower shapes, the composition and the colors. My only thing that I would suggest um, or critique that I have is the white space in your flowers. So white space is obviously crucial to show separation in petals and different layers. Um, but the chocolate cosmos specifically, and then the top left uh, pink peony has a little bit too much uh, white space in it. So it, it still looks on point shape wise, but if you tighten it up a little bit, it's gonna make it feel a little bit more full and fluffy and not as like, here's a piece over here, here's a piece over here. Very 
small changes, minor changes, and uh, everything else is on point to me. So really great job, Priscilla. So next up is Barbara O. Oh. She's been painting for six months. She didn't list what supply she's using, so we'll see what it looks like. She submitted an abstract painting from my tutorial on YouTube, the simple watercolor painting ideas for beginners and a landscape. So she's been painting for six months. Let's see what she submitted. So she's got the abstract piece on the left and then a landscape piece that was like her interpretation of the California sunset with the palm trees. And already I can tell the paper is giving you some issues. Um, but let me start with what I love about this piece. I love the colors. I love the colors that you chose for both pieces. Obviously you went with your own intuition and flair on the trees and the sky painting. And I love that. Um, I love the turquoise and the pink and the blue combinations. And um, the pattern on the left is awesome. I think if you, and then here's my main critique. I think if you upped the quality in your paper, you would see a huge difference in your blending because right now, especially in the sky of the landscape piece, it looks just a little choppy and not smooth blending between colors. So that's probably because of the paper you're using. I'm not sure what it is. It looks like it could be Canson watercolor paper, um, but something on the smoother side um, so for me and how I teach and how I paint, I prefer cold pressed and something that's really toothy like arch paper arches or Legion Stonehenge Aqua or Saunders. So, uh, make sure if you want to smooth out that coverage, then I would make sure to get some, some paper like that. Uh, the trees are awesome. I think you did a really good job on the texture in the trees. I'm not sure if you used a toothbrush or something, cause you got some really, really fine dots around it, around the edges. Could be a toothbrush, could be some sort of really fine liner brush, um, or maybe you splayed a filbert brush, but your trees are awesome. I think that perspective too is really good. Again, the colors are awesome. Just needs some help with the blending on the landscape piece, but I think that that could change with the quality of paper and potentially the quality of pigment, cause I'm not sure what paint you're using either. And that definitely helps too. Overall, amazing job, especially for only painting for six months. Next up, we have Jessica D. She has been painting on and off for about a year. And the supplies she's using are artistic, 140 pound paper, Brea Reese and Princeton brushes, and Windsor and Newton color. So she doesn't specify whether it's professional or Cotman level. Um, and so let's see her submission. Okay, so my favorite thing about this painting is your tree shapes are on point. Um, a couple things that I would tweak and it will make all the difference are white space. Um, currently the last tree, the bottom right tree is the best in my opinion for white space. So you've left a nice little dappled light look like just, you know, that's breathing space between your leaves and your branches because right now the rest of your trees all kind of look like just kind of uh, like spongy shapes. So leaving more white space between your trees is gonna help show that. And then you can put little tiny uh, branches in those gaps. So leave a little bit more white space and it looks like either it's either the paper or um, potentially the colors or, the, or both that you're using aren't really letting you uh, blend as effectively, like the top layer is just kind of sitting there and creating hard lines. So either your base layer isn't wet enough or it's a supply issue. So try to work a little bit quicker and see if that's what it is. Otherwise upgrading your paints and your paper is gonna help with creating that smooth blend because the top left one, the first tree, we have a really, really bright green that's like seven or eight shades darker than the base layer. So there's not like a smooth blend between highlight, mid-tone and shadow. Um, so you'd wanna kind of bridge the gap there. And then my other tip um, for you is the direction that you're pointing your brush. So I can really tell in the top right tree that your brush was pointed kind of in the same direction for a lot of leaves in, in a consecutive row like this because you can see the point of the brush pointing in the same direction. So just try to mix that up. So it gives you that random um, tossed leaf look. Um, and then for 
all of all of the trees, like the actual leaves, the blending. Um, so make sure you're working with really good supplies or working quicker so that you have smoother blending for wet and wet. And then the texture on top, just make sure to change the angle of your brush so it's more random and leave some more white space and you are on the right track to make some amazing looking trees. They're, these are awesome, so keep it up. And then next we have Sherilyn B. She did or submitted the ocean tutorial that I have on my YouTube channel and then also the cardinal watercolor tutorial that I have on my Patreon exclusive. I'm not sure how long she's been painting or what supplies she's using because she hasn't said, so this will be fun to see if I can guess. Ooh. Okay, so the ocean one, I don't really have anything to critique besides the use of the white gouache for the wave breaks. I would just make them look more foamy. So like more dense areas, you, you've got the thin little scribbles down. I would just have more of the um, bigger foam areas to take up more space just because that is gonna make it look really obvious that it's a shore break. Um, right now it's just kind of like thin scribbles in this S curve along your wave. So I would just, I would just beef up some of that white space um, to make it look more crashy. Cause if you picture a wave crashing in the ocean, it's like a lot of, a lot of foam, a lot of white is coming off that wave. But other than that, the colors are on point, the wet and wet um, smooth coverage and blends between the Prussian blue and the turquoise and then the sand color are really great. There's some smoothing out that could happen between the Prussian blue and the turquoise layer because um, you can see kind of some, a couple areas where there's hard lines. But other than that, I think it is pretty on point. And then she also submitted the Cardinal and I think this is amazing. She did a blurry kind of snowy vibe background instead of what I showed in the Patreon exclusive, which was kind of like the same-ish color as the Cardinal, the red, reddish pinkish hues in the background blur. Um, I really like your choice of that light blue, turquoisey blue and the white gouache that you added on top for snow. The branches are beautiful. Those are, really, really good branches. Uh, the only critique I have is the shape of the bird's torso and wing. Just look a little bit on the big side and then the wing looks a little small compared to how big his body is. So uh, work work with, you know, maybe sketching basic shapes and a few birds or cardinals over and over and over again to, to get those proportions down a little bit. Um, but everything else looks on point and I love that he's staring straight at us in the face and the eyes are all lined up perfectly. So you did a really good job. So next up we have Wenjun Q. I hope I'm saying that right. Wenjun's been painting since summer of 2020, follows every tutorial. Thank you, thank you. So the supplies that Wenjun is using are Windsor Newton watercolor paints, a mix of professional level and Cotman level. Legion Cold Press watercolor paper on a block. So the same paper I use and the same brushes, the Princeton Heritage 4050 series in size two and six. So let's see. So this uh, submission is from a Patreon exclusive tutorial on a poinsettia flower that I did. And it literally looks like the exact painting I did. <laughs> like I, I don't, I can't really tell the difference actually. Um, so that's a good thing. So uh, your colors are on point, obviously. I mixed up a variety of reds using some purple undertones, some brown undertones. You have all of those. Um, the details are fantastic. And the greens, the like little evergreen sprigs that we did are exactly the same, basically. The only thing I would change is in the, is in the evergreen leaves. Um, they're just a little bit too dense. If you have a little bit more white space in those, um, then it's pretty much perfect. Uh, I also can tell that some of the greens just aren't bright as bright as some uh, of the pro professional level Windsor Newton. So maybe you have the Cotman level sap green, I'm not sure, but once you upgrade you know, to the professional level greens and the professional level browns or blues, whatever might not be coming through as vibrant, um, it'll pop even more. But overall, this is awesome. So the greens, and then one more thing would be about the little 
section of berries in the bottom left corner. The whole bottom third of the piece feels very dense, whereas the top two thirds are much lighter. So I, I would just trim down how much berries you put down in that bottom corner to help create that balance. So you don't have such a heavy tipping point on the base of the piece versus the top, which is super duper light and then really, really heavy. So it's a little bit off balance, but other than that, really, really good. So last but not least, we have an art submission from Jade S. Um, she submitted a few paintings. So we're gonna go through each one of them, kind of briefly touch on the uh, things that I would change, things I would keep. And she also, so the supplies that she's using, size six round brush in the Princeton Synthetic Gold Taclon, um, and then a size three in the Princeton Heritage 4050. She is also using Canson watercolor paper, 300 GSM and Legion paper, but only for the last month's live tutorial. And she can feel the difference. I'm telling you people, I wonder if I can spot the difference. And then the colors she's using are a set from Mungoy, Mung, Mungio, Mungio, Mungio. But she has sap green and scarlet lake from Windsor Newton and green colors in gouache as they look brighter. Okay. So let's start with the Patreon exclusive tutorial, the flowers in the base. I love this. I think uh, you've done a really, really good job with the colors. The colors are on the point. And then I love also the texture in some of the leaves where you have some like jagged edges on the leaves. Um, I would love to see a little bit like in the front kind of hero peony right in the front. Uh, the center with the little tiny petal shapes is kind of like a square. If you like blur your eyes a little bit, you can see the square of tiny petal shapes. I'd want this to be a little bit more round, kind of like a, a half circle more or like a sun setting over the ocean. So it's more just a half circle, like a bulb instead of a square shape. Jade also has taken my course, my online course, photograph your artwork. So all of her submissions um, are beautifully styled photos, which if you're not familiar, I used to be a photographer and I now, you know, teach in my online course, photograph your artwork, how to style and compose, um, photographs of your artwork. So lighting, styling tips, composition tips and whatnot. So awesome job there. Um, lighting just needs a little bit of help. It looks a little bit, and you can probably do this in your app that you're editing with just to brighten it up a little bit. Okay. So next is the little picnic setting that we did for Patreon exclusive. Um, I can tell in this one that this is Canson watercolor paper, um, just because of the way the pigment is sitting on the paper. It's really smooth, but for this type of painting, it's not a huge deal because we're not doing a lot of wet and wet work. We're doing mostly wet and dry. I love this. I love the detail that you put on the plates. The tiny little sandwich looks amazing. Uh, the bouquet looks amazing. I love that you put the paper wrap around it. Um, for the styling that you did in this photo, just to, because you're a student and photograph your artwork, um, it's a bit cluttered on the right side. So I just take out maybe two to three elements to free up that white space and give it some more white space there. Um, but the painting itself is awesome. Great job there. Next that you submitted, first of all, this is my favorite um, photo that you did, uh, styling wise and lighting wise, still would take out a couple of the tubes of paint and the rocks kind of get buried under the tubes of paint. So we don't need those, um, but everything else is perfect. And I love the lighting and I love that you're creating that C curve, like I mentioned. Um, the painting is awesome. I love the wet and wet stuff that you did. I can tell uh, this is still, or no, this is this looks like Legion. So the blending is happening a lot better, wet and wet wise. It looks like Legion anyway, I could be wrong. Um, but you can tell that there's smooth coverage between and blending between the colors. And I think it looks awesome. I would want the yellow flowers to be just a little bit brighter or more opaque. So, um, so a lot of them are really, really pale. So I would just make those a little bit brighter, but other than that, I think it looks awesome. So then we have a tulip parrot tulip situation in a vase with some blue hand painted looking dots. Um, I think this is really beautiful. I would 
um, add a little bit. So the greens in your flowers are really, really, really bright. And then the oranges and pinks and purples are a bit more muted. So I would make that look a bit more cohesive um, together. Uh, the vase looks awesome. I love how it's blending. I love all the weird swirliness. The, the styling in the photo, again, I would just, I would take out that camera that's in the, because you can't see that it's a camera. It looks like it could be a sewing machine or something, but because the lens is cut off, it doesn't look like a camera. So you wanna at least make sure that people know what the item is when you're photographing it. Um, so have it either more in the frame of the photo or just take it out. So overall, I've loved all of your art submissions. There's just a couple tweaks here and there. And then with your photograph, your artwork course that you've been putting into practice, just lighten up on the styling elements just because we have everything um, to use that we can use to style with. Just start minimal and then you can always add, but usually the ones that have the minimal amounts of things in the photo do the best. So I hope that was helpful for you wherever you're at in your art, in your painting journey. And let's give a round of applause to those of you who had the courage, the people in this art critique, the very first art critique video that we've ever done. Uh, round of applause to those of you, thank you, John, who submitted your work. I know that takes some bravery and some courage. Um, it's intimidating to have somebody critique for the world to see <laughs> your paintings. So thank you for submitting. I'm sure it helped a lot of other people. Hopefully it helped you to those people who submitted but I know it's gonna help a lot of people because um, maybe they'll see something that they find in themselves uh, in one of your paintings or whatever. And for further resources, if you wanna get better at watercolor, make sure you check out this video I have on my channel called The Complete Beginner's Guide to Watercolor. It's like a two plus hour long video, everything you would wanna know about watercolor. I also have a free floral watercolor ebook that you can download and it will give you all the basics and supplies and all the things that you would wanna know about floral watercolor, check that out. And along with that, I have two, three books on the way, but two out currently called Everyday Watercolor. So make sure you check those out. They're available on Amazon and most local bookstores, Everyday Watercolor and Everyday Watercolor Flowers. And then Everyday Watercolor Oceans is coming out in July, 2022, so stay tuned. And like I mentioned, my Patreon, we cover uh, more in-depth topics on there as well, so make sure you check that out. And as always, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.